Hey everybody, I'm Mo with RPS Solar Pumps and today we are gonna take you through a really cool video talking about what to expect in the sizing process. We're gonna show you how to use one of our most robust tools on the website, our sizing form, and what role that ultimately plays in the sizing process. I'm here as always joined with my wonderful friend and teammate Val. Val, take it away. Hey. So I have worked for years uh, sizing people for solar pumps and the sizing form is the first, uh, first amount of information that I get about anybody's land, property, well. So I've used this to help size hundreds of people for a solar pump. Um, it's just our initial take at gathering some data about your project. So we will be going through the sizing form on our website today, just to give you a little idea. It's pretty quick, it's just a couple pages, your contact information, and then we give you a call. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think that sometimes when you pop open any sort of form that asks you questions, the process can be intimidating, uh, but we're gonna jump in to the actual sizing form that you see on the website and walk you through it and show you why it's no big deal at all. So here we go, we're gonna take it away on Val's computer. Awesome. All right, so here we are at the RPS Solar Pumps website. And usually the sizing form will either pop, pop up automatically or you can just scroll down to the bottom of the page like I'm going to do. And you see size your solar pump on that right side. Awesome. So let's click on that. It'll pop up into a new window. And the first question, easy. It's not a test. Uh, we aren't trying to test you on your knowledge of your well or your setup. Whatever you can bring to the party for the sizing form, we're more than happy to work off of that information and then start asking you questions because we know what to ask, right? Um, we've seen thousands of these projects uh, come past our desks. So, the first and, and I think that the other important thing to remember is that one, it's okay to not know this information, and two, that every sizing form fill will be followed up generally with a phone call. So all of the things that you don't know, uh, our incredible team is going to walk you through it and kind of show you how to uh, find the answers to those things. Yeah. So on this map are the solar zone locations, which just means you know, Texas, New Mexico, bottom parts of Nevada and California are gonna get a little bit more sun. Uh, if you're living in Maine or New Hampshire, you're probably gonna get a little bit of less sun during the year. So locate your state. Uh, for now, let's just say that we're in uh, West Texas. So solar zone number one, which is most sun. Okay. Then we go to your primary use of water. Uh, you can choose between livestock, irrigation, keeping your pond full, so either you're pumping from a well to your pond, maybe a spring to your pond, aeration and fountain, so if you want to aerate a fish pond or create a fountain for either visual effect or a different type of aeration, that's your choice. Household is for those people who are doing any sort of off-grid living, uh, they have a homestead, and then a backup to AC pump is the selection you'll make if you have an existing AC 110 or 220 volt powered pump already installed in a well or maybe it's a surface pump and you want to transition that system over to having solar backup so we can battery backup that system or we can just do solar up to you. Nice, awesome. Yep. Oh, and I forgot to select, so today I'll just select livestock. All right, so if I select livestock, it's gonna ask me how much water I need per day. That's gallons per day. That's the abbreviation here, the three letter abbreviation. I think I'll say a thousand gallons roughly. You know, I've got a couple of head of cattle. Usually we say 20 gallons per head of cattle. Next, the question is, where are you pumping from? So we can pump from a well, but our pumps are able to adapt to any other water source, yeah. like a spring, a pond, <coughs> a float, a submersible pump in your pond. Uh, you can pump from a tank or a cistern. Uh, and then we have people pumping from vaults, uh, drainage tiles, any of the above. So if, if it's not listed here, just select other. For right now. These water pumps are actually so versatile that you'd be surprised what they can handle. Yeah, yeah, and we get a number of interesting calls, so don't feel 
weird about giving us a, a project that might seem at face value a little difficult or different. If, if you are going through that, we literally just helped somebody size a pump for a sewage fountain. So we've heard all of it. <laughs> Today, we'll just make it easy and say we're sizing for a well. Then we're gonna ask you how many vertical feet will the pump need to pump water? Uh, now, vertical feet, it's a combination of things, right? So it's from the top of the water in your well, which is your static water level, up to the highest point that the pump is going to have to push water up to. So let's say you have a 50 foot hill outside of the well that you're also gonna have to push water up from the well's location. Um, it would be 50 feet up to the tank. And then let's say that your storage tank is also uh, 12 feet tall, which is about a thousand gallon tank, right? That matches for about the amount of water that I need per day. Um, so the vertical feet, the vertical lift that you're gonna be lifting is 50 plus the 10 or 12 feet from the tank. So about 62 feet. Uh, and then we'll get into, you know, adding static water level onto that head calculation. If you know it, you can just combine it in there and say, so does the distance that uh, that it has to be pumped matter, or are we going to cover that? So horizontal distance does matter. It doesn't necessarily factor into the head calculation uh, until we're talking about frictional loss, which is totally. what is your pipe size, how, how far away are we pumping, and we'll cover that in the phone call. But for this question, we're only looking at the distance that it has to go up. Exactly. Yep. Perfect. Just the vertical, the elevation change, that's what some people call it. Um, so today I'm going to select the 52 to 150 foot radio button. Great. Then we'll ask when you are hoping to get going with your system. So do you think that you're going to need it right now, you know, within the next week or two? Do you think that you're going to need it in the next couple months? Maybe you're just researching for next year because, you know, you've got construction, you've bought the property, <coughs> you haven't closed on it. Um, or you're just researching and you need a few materials like spec sheets or an email uh, or even a hard mail catalog to your residence. And if you are in that latter category, I think a lot of people assume that uh, we only want to hear from people who are looking to buy right now. And that is absolutely not the case. We get just about as excited to help someone figure out what they need next year as we do about figuring out what they need uh, next month. Yeah, I have had customer relationships for six months, a year and a half uh, before they actually purchase and we check in with them maybe every couple, I would say every six months just to see where they are, if they have the well drilled yet, uh, if, if things have changed, right? Yeah, absolutely. So don't hold back. If you're just in the research phase, we definitely want to hear from you. Cool. And then the last one is the state where the pump will be installed. So hopefully you know this right off the top of your head. We'll say Texas. Another cool thing, I think one of my favorite parts about this form is that you can keep track of where you are in the form process right at the top of the page. So if you take a look, we're already over 50% complete. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Awesome, well now we're just at the contact information phase. Uh, Arguably, maybe the most important piece. <laughs> yeah, our contact, we don't wanna bother you. Uh, we don't send out tons of emails. Um, we don't pester you either on the phone. That contact information is there so that we can give you a follow-up call. Uh, we can have a little more in-depth conversation. That's really the only way that we can get granular details about the project is having a person-to-person -person phone call. That's what we prefer. Another, I think, maybe common misconception is that uh, your whole entire sizing process will happen on the form. And that's not true. Uh, the form is an incredible launching spot. It gets us a lot of really good starting information, but we will have to follow up with you through a phone call um, and a couple emails before we actually figure out exactly what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. Yep, so then you can fill it out and you can even check the box to enter a giveaway for a free RPS solar pump. Yeah, we are always running really cool giveaways, so uh, make sure you check that box. Yep, and then you submit it and it goes off into the RPS uh, database and one of our solar pump specialists will follow up with you. Yeah, absolutely. We have an entire team of uh, excellent trained uh, solar pump specialists who can help you figure out all of the different things that you're gonna need. 
Um, so that actually wraps up part one of what to expect in the sizing process. Um, let us know in the comments if you guys have any questions. Uh, Val, it has been a pleasure making this video with you again. Uh, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate every single one of you. Uh, if you wanna just jump straight to the sizing uh, form, we're gonna have that link in the description of this YouTube video. Until next time, uh, thanks for following us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video with somebody who you think could also use a solar powered well pump. See ya. Until next time, bye.